Meta has launched Code Llama. And yesterday I showed you how you can run it within just two minutes in a free Google Collab notebook. Today I'll be showing you how you can do the same on a Mac with an M1 chip. And I'll be taking you through all the steps. Now, if you really want to, you could find a way to run it on a computer or a Mac with an Intel chip. You can find one of my videos. It's about installing on Windows and Mac with an Intel chip. Uh, it is a bit of work though. Let's get started for the Mac with the M1. You can find a free Python IPY, um, it's a Jupyter Notebook. You can find it on the Trellis Research GitHub. Um, to get started, just download the notebook from the GitHub repo, and then follow these instructions for installing Jupyter Lab uh, if you haven't already installed it. So I'll click here. First step is to install uh, VNV, which allows you to create a sandbox. I've already got that installed, so I'll move forward. Next, I recommend creating a sandbox virtual environment. I've called it Llama Env. Now that that's created, I'm going to activate it. And here's the command to do so. Next, I'm going to install JupyterLab within that environment. For this, you do need to have Python. I think I have some instructions. Uh, you'll find them on GitHub as well for installing Python if you have to do it the first time. I recommend using Homebrew if you're going to do it on Mac. Now that we've installed Jupyter, uh, Lab, in fact, I uh, just copied the same thing in twice. So let me correctly put in Jupyter Lab. Uh, we'll then install IPY kernel. IPY kernel allows us to connect a virtual environment or a sandbox to the kernel that we're going to run Jupyter Lab on. So let's install that. And then we're going to actively set the kernel uh, to match, uh, to be connected to the virtual environment called lamenv. So that's what I'm doing right here. And that is the last command before I can actually run Jupyter Lab. Um, and here is Jupyter Lab. I'm now seeing my Jupyter Notebook. Uh, here is the free notebook that we're going to start off with. And I'll then show you a pro version where you can um, add files to the context of your chat, save chats, reload them later. Once you open up the notebook right here, uh, just check that the kernel is Llama Env, which is the virtual environment we created. And then you can collect, select run and run all cells. It'll now give you a choice to choose your operating system. So you want to choose B for Mac with an M1 chip. And it's now cloning Llama CCP, CPP, which is the software that's used to run Llama on the Mac. You can see that folder appearing there. That once uh, it's cloned, it'll start to compile it for the M1 chip using what's called Metal. Um, Metal allows the compilation to make use of the GPU on the M1 chip, and that really accelerates, and that's why the M1 chip works so well. It takes a little bit of time to compile. I'm not even going to speed up the video, though, because um, it's quite impressive how fast it runs. Compilation is completed now, and now um, we're going to look to download the model itself. So that's downloading Code Llama. So there's a HTTP request sent. And ultimately, we're downloading uh, this model here, which is Code Llama Instruct 7B. It's the smallest model. I'm using uh, GGUF, which is the new form of GGML. Uh, it's specific for running on uh, C. So it runs in C language. And it's um, in some ways, it's quite simple. And that's what allows it to operate nicely on laptops. Now, I've down, I'm downloading from uh, the bloke. He has generated a range of these models. There are quite a few versions, which I'll just show you here. Uh, they range in size. The larger the size, the better the quality, but also the slower. I've literally picked the smallest one here. It's quantized. It has two-bit quantization. Uh, you can check out one of my videos on quantization um, if you want to learn more about that. Anyway, I've picked the smallest one because it gives us the best chance of running fast on a Mac. I've got a Mac M1 with eight gigabytes of RAM. That's the smallest you could have. So if you have anything better, bigger, it's going to run faster. Let's head over to the code. And we can see that the model file has almost been downloaded. We've got 2.3 downloaded out of about three gigabytes. So uh, if you really wanted to use a better quality model, like if you have more compute, you could simply replace, um, you could replace the name of the model that I have in the code. Sorry, it's up here a little bit. Basically replace this name here uh, with one of the Q3 models or something larger. If you are going Q3, I recommend the Q3M. 
Um, it's one of the best kind of ratios of performance uh, in terms of quality to speed. Okay, so the model is now downloaded and we're now offered this choice, which I've built in to choose between either a 500 contact, le contact length or 4,000. Again, it's the speed versus, uh, it's a speed trade-off. It's not a quality trade-off. It's now a speed versus context trade-off. If you want to have longer chats, you should pick option B, um, but you will need more compute. It's a bit tight on a MacBook with 8 GB uh, on the M1 chip. Uh, it probably, it might just barely work with this smallest model. Anyway, I'm, for now, I'm going to just pick the high speed option, which is A. And when I scroll down, I have Jupyter Code Llama. Um, so let's just ask Jupyter Code Llama to write a short program that adds three numbers. And, and let's see how Jupyter Code Llama does. Okay, so looks like a Python program. Now you can see this is uh, truncated here because I've basically set the maximum response length to be 20% of the maximum context, which is 20% of 500, which is about hundred characters. So it's hit about hundred characters here and that's, um, that's why it's there. Now you can clear the chat and you can start again. So again, to be useful, um, ideally you would have more than eight gigabytes of RAM on your Mac. And then you can just select option B and set it to longer. You can even set it to even longer than 4,000. You can go up to 16,000 because that's uh, what it's been trained on. There's another way with rope scaling. I'll maybe show on another video where you could go up to 100,000 or more in context length. Uh, so let me know in the comments if that's what you're interested in. In the meantime, let's head over and uh, take a look at uh, Jupyter Code Llama Pro. Now, the difference with this notebook, um, I'll just say... In fact, let's go back to this one and I'm going to stop the kernel. So I'll just uh, shut down the kernel and I'm going to run the pro notebook. So here, check I'm on Llama Env and go to run and run all cells. Select option B. It's not going to have to download again because it'll detect that we've already cloned Llama CPP. And it's, it's just bringing me right to the selection of high speed. And so I can scroll down here and here's Jupyter Llama Pro. It's very similar, but it allows you to upload a file and save the chat. For example, I'll just show you some sample files here. Um, I could upload, I download a, a Stripe API PDF. So you could upload the Stripe API reference just as context. So you see here, it's now added this API. It's only adding. 80% of the context of the 500 word context, uh, token context. So if you wanted to upload more, you'd need to go back and select the option for longer. But anyway, you can see here how it's um, added that. Uh, see if it, uh, this is not a coding question. Ideally, you know, I'd be using this for com some kind of uh, task, but let's see how it does. I don't know if it will. Okay, well, it's more than five words, but I guess it gives a summary. Now you can um, save that chat as, uh, let's say, my Stripe chat. Save the chat. Uh, so it's saved into a chats file and I can clear the chat and then I could upload a chat. Um, so here's my Stripe chat. Just click open and there it is backloaded again. All right, folks, that's it for the demo on the Mac M1. I hope you have fun. Let me know any questions. Cheers.